Okay, let's go into oil real quick. I'm going to do a video for you guys and gals so you can review this. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to slow this down for you. All right, the market can only do two things. We can either chop or trend. The market's very orderly. And like I said, it doesn't matter if you trade the S&P 500, NASDAQ futures, Dow minis, Russell 2000, trade the DAX, soybeans, corn, stocks. It doesn't matter. This even works on stocks, on volatile stocks. It doesn't matter. What you want to do is this. We know the market can only do two things, chop or trend, very orderly. So what I have is I have two plug-and-play moving averages built into the system. And moving averages are worthless. Remember, we don't buy and sell moving average crossovers or for support and resistance. It's ridiculous. Support and resistance for moving averages, you don't know what it's going to stop at the 200, the 50, the 34, the 20. It's ridiculous. Even if they're stacked on top of each other with different time frames. I don't care if you have a daily moving average that's overlapping a five-minute moving average. It's not, not order flow. It's lagging. So you might as well forget that right, right away. It just doesn't work consistently. So what we got to do, we use moving averages for what? For trend direction. Am I in chop or am I in trend? Because that's going to dictate how you're going to buy and sell market profile. Because market profile is a true roadmap of the market. It's the true order flow of the market. It's not some moving average stochastic, moving average convergence divergence. It's not some lagging ridiculous indicators like that. those that are lagging. This is before it happens. And so what happens is, is you look at this magenta MA, that's the most important one, okay? That tells you if we're flat as a pancake and it's not angled, then you're in a chop market. You're in a range market. We have rules for range then. The rules for range say this. We want to sell the high market profile and we want to buy the low market profile. And we want to avoid the control point, which is the most volume that's traded in that instrument. So this blue, I have three more important market profiles on the system. My solid lines are the most important. This is my volume profile, high value areas in red. My control point, that's the most volume that's been trading in, in that particular instrument during the morning. And the red, green line is my low value area volume profile. So the thick lines are my volume profile. That's the most important. Okay, you want to concentrate in a flatter range market. If the moving average, is, moving average is flat, you want to try to sell the red and buy the green. They both stop to the exact tick on volume profile today, right there and right here. I'll show you how to put limit orders in on those. Now, that's just not by chance. That's not by chance to stop to the exact tick on each side. That's true order flow. Sometimes it can go through a couple ticks or be short a couple ticks. It's just got to come within a couple ticks of my profile. Okay, so that's volume profile. My second profile, that's been around since 1994. My second profile has been around since 85, is price profile. They're not as important because they're not the volume of the market. Volume dictates order flow, but it gives you stacked areas. That's the green dots down here and the red dots up here. My third profile I have in the, in the room is my developing profile. As price ticks, it shows you where possible reversals are and is developing as price moves along. That's my thin green line and thin red line up here. So if you look down here, I got three profiles. I got my developing thin green, my volume green, low value, and my low value price profile. They're all named low value. They're just all calculated differently. And the one thing that is unique about my system is I use longer term profiles, not standard 30 minute market profiles. And I want to see where they're stacked. I want to see where these three profiles stack with a couple ticks of each other. If I can see that, I got a possible reversal area. And what I want to do is, is I want to trade off those stacked areas called a brick wall. So if I know I'm a flat magenta MA, I know I am chopper range. My, 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 my methodology is avoid the blue line. Never trade the blue line. That's the most volume is traded. You never trade that. You only trade that with trend retracements. You never trade the blue line. You always trade the outer edges. Trade the red, trade the green until we break out. So if we hit the red, we hit the red this morning, and we hit the green this morning, nice trade here, nice trade here. And I was trying to do another reversal again at my market profile. So what we want to do is we can put limit orders in if it's a brick wall in range markets. If you look at the bottom here, the low is 73 and the high is 76, difference of three ticks. You can split the difference and go and put your limit order in at 76 or 77 for a long limit order right here because it's stacked area, and, so, and it's a, it is a range market. 
You can put a limit order in it here. I got the high of 94 and the low of 91. So the difference of three ticks. You can put a limit order in to sell up here at 92 or 93. So that was a 92 limit sell, came all the way down to 75. This is a 76, 77 long, came all the way up to 94. So just on two trades, you have very limited risk because your stop is uh, initially on brick walls, eight ticks. You can put an eight tick hard stop in, risking 80 bucks on brick walls. Then after it gets rolling back up, you can put it two ticks below the swing low. Your risk on this trade was three to four ticks, three to four ticks, possible five with slippage on each side. So you risk 50 bucks on this trade, 50 bucks on this trade for one contract, and went from profile to profile. That's how you trade range. It's very simple how you trade range. Not very difficult. Now, what happens in range, and will happen with this market again today, is from range you go into trend. And let's go to yesterday then, and we'll show you how yesterday worked. Because yesterday, we were in range. We were up here at this high. See how flat we are, the Magenta MA, we're in chop. Traders bought the low, that's where market profile was at the time, and market profile was up here at the time. So I marked these market profile levels up like this. And then it's, we sold the high and we bought the low. Then I said at 8.30 in the morning, I drew these up and I said, listen, I'll put this over here. And I said, hey, we're going to look for a breakout retest out of chop. And then you're going to try to go back into trend. So what happened, is this, I mentioned it right here at 8.30 in the morning, 8.30 right here. Look for a break retest to the upside or outside of profile, because that's what you do after you break out of range. Sure enough, we broke out. Look at the Rinko bar comes down. It retraces, green, green, green. There's my red Rinko bar. We have negative market delta over here for the order imbalance. And look at the trend trade we got. The trend trade we got all the way down, and that was projected at 8.30 in the morning. So that's how you go from shop back into trend. Okay, look for trend. That's a trend market. So we'll look for the same thing today, too. You can go, because you see the difference in chop. This is trend over here, right? You see the difference from here? Look how choppy we are. We're in a wedge. Chop equals wedge. You're in a wedge. You're in a symmetrical wedge again, like I told you yesterday. Get ready for a break of symmetrical wedge. This stuff is not hard. When you're in chopper range, when the Magenta MA is flat, you usually have two higher lows, two lower highs. That's a symmetrical wedge. Same thing yesterday. I said, hey. This is the calm before the storm. We were doing this yesterday. We sold the high, bought the low. We had two great trades in the morning. I said, it's going to get violent. This is a calm before the storm on the microphone. That's why I said, and look what happened. It got violent. It got violent to the upside. It got violent to the downside. Why? It broke out of a wedge. Now, on trend, it's very easy. See the difference in trend? You see how we can cross down trend? It's a simple trend. You're going to break your two-time stacked area, three-time stacked area, two-time stack. Let it retest, negative market delta, negative Rinko bar. When they match up, see how the negative Rinko bar was right there? There's your long. Stop loss, two ticks below the, above the swing high. You see the difference in trend? Trend, if look at the angle. Look at the angle. Look at shot, sideways. Trend, angle. So what we do on trend? You know it. Break retest trade. Here's a great one yesterday. Here's your sell on trend. And here's your selling trend again. Break retest. Watch. It's very simple. Don't make this difficult. Break control point. Now we can use the control point, the blue line. In chop, we can't use a control point. But here we can. See how we break retest? And here's my reversal bar. God love you. Nice reversal bar right there. Ninja 8 called that one too. Nice reversal bar right here. See the difference in trend trades versus chop? Chop. I'm trying to sell the high by the low until we break out. So I sold the high today and we bought the low because we're flat. We sold the high and we bought the low. Sold the high, bought the low. Trend, you just let a break, retest the trend. Break, retest, get short. Break, retest, get short. Pretty neat, right? And that's how the market works. Either you trend or you chop. That's it. Not difficult at all to understand. Just remember, if you're in a chop market, we don't trade the blue. Trade the outer edges until we break out. Now, when we break out, what we'll do? We'll look for the same thing. We'll look to break away. We'll look for a retest out of the wedge. We'll look for a retest of that, and we'll look for a, another one just like that, like I predicted yesterday. This is my prediction yesterday out of the breakout, and I called it perfect, and it was gorgeous. It broke out. 
Here was my high. I said, look for a short up there. Called it for a range. And I said, look for a breakout next. Break retest. And that's just how it works. It's not that I'm smarter than the average trading opponent. It's just I know how order flow works. It goes from trend to chop, chop to trend. And that's how we trade every single market. You got to understand that. If you do that, you do very well.